this is Mia Wood, Associate Professor of Philosophy in the Philosophy and Sociology Department at Pierce College. Today we're going to talk about the relationship between truth functionality and the introduction and elimination rules for negation, conjunction, and disjunction. Each of our connectives has an introduction and elimination rule associated with it. One way that you can think about these rules is in terms of how their truth definitions will allow us to assemble or disassemble sentences. So let's take a look at our truth definitions for negation and then the introduction and elimination rules associated with it and then we'll move on to the conjunction and the disjunction. First, let's review our truth definitions for the negation. What makes a negation true or false? Well, there are two ways we can approach this. First, if a negation is true, then the sentence that it negates, P, is false. Another way we can approach this is as follows. If a sentence P is false, its negation is true. Now let's look at the upper right quadrant of our slide. If a negation is false, the sentence it negates is true. Another way we can look at this is as follows. If a sentence P is true, its negation is false. Basically, what negation does is asserts the opposite truth value of the sentence it negates. Now let's see how this notion of truth functionality for negation plays out in our natural deduction. Okay, so bearing in mind the truth definitions for negation, let's take a look at the negation elimination rule. When you have some sentence negation, negation P, it follows that P, drop your eyeball down, or eyeballs, to the um, uh, partial truth table. Notice that we have the sentence not, not P and the sentence P. Notice also that the negation that's to the far left of the not not p is true and the sentence p is true so that tells us that there is truth functional equivalence or tautological equivalence between these two sentences and we can see how this equivalence plays out if not not p is true then not p is false and therefore p is true now let's take a look at the negation intro rule. This rule also follows the truth definition for negation, but things are a little bit more complicated, both in terms of the process whereby the um, conclusion is derived, as well as the visual. So notice here that we have two blue vertical lines. The vertical line on the left is the main spine or the main line of the derivation while the indented vertical line is called an assumptive proof. Remember that every argument involves assumptions. These are our premises. You can assume whatever you want. The question at issue is whether or not you can derive this, that, or the other sentence from one or more assumptions. In this case, in the case of negation intro, when we assume some sentence P and from it, we drive a contradiction, what we end up with is the following. P is assumed to be true, but it yields a necessarily false sentence, either truth functionally or in the language proof and logic system, um, a uh, first order contradiction or a Tarski world contradiction. But let's focus on truth functionality. That symbol, that contradiction symbol, is a stand-in for the sentence P conjunction not P. In other words, if the sentence P yields a contradiction, that is a sentence that is always false, then that means that P K 
can't possibly be true, which is how we get the introduction of the negation. But let's see if we can make more sense of this uh, in terms of an example with truth tables. So remember, bear in mind that when we say that some sentence P is true, but it yields a false sentence, the conclusion is that that sentence P cannot be true, hence the introduction of the negation. So remember, assume P, derive a contradiction, get out of the assumptive proof to conclude, therefore, not P is the case. Let's look at it this way. Take a look at the argument on the right side of the screen. We have the following premises, P disjunction Q and not P. They're separated from each other by the single slash. And then the premises are separated from the conclusion or the conclusion is separated from the premises by a double slash. Notice that if an argument is valid, any attempt to reject the conclusion or any attempt to say the conclusion is false while the premises are true will yield a contradiction. Specifically, in terms of truth functionality, that contradiction occurs at the level of the truth definition. Let's see how this plays out. Let's assume that our premises are true, so disjunction, negation are true, and the conclusion is false. So we're going to assume that the argument is invalid. Now, what is from this? Well, if Q is false, that means that the sentence where it appears in the premises also has to be false. What follows from that in terms of our truth definitions? Well, if Q is false, but the disjunction is said to be true, that means that P has to be true. But now we've run into a, a, a problem, specifically a contradiction. Notice that we're saying P is true. But notice also that we've assumed not P is true. We can't have it both ways in terms of our truth definitions. We can't say that P is true and not P is true. There's a contradiction there. That means that our initial assumption, namely that our conclusion was false, is untenable. We can't preserve it. What makes a conjunction true? Well, a conjunction is true when each of the conjuncts is true. Therefore, if a conjunction is true, P is true. Therefore, if a conjunction is true, Q is true. Now, let's see how this truth definition plays out in the natural deduction rules for conjunction. If we have some sentence P and somewhere else in our proof we have some sentence Q, it follows that both are true. Remember, in the proof we've either been given or derived the sentence P and the sentence Q and since we're assuming that these are true or we've proven from the assumptions that these are true, it follows that the conjunction is true. Working in the opposite direction, when we say that P conjunction Q is true, it follows that P is true. Now, lastly, let's look at disjunction. A disjunction is going to be true in three possible ways. So notice that if disjunction is true, P could be true, Q could be true, and they both could be true. Therefore, if P is true, the disjunction is true. If Q is true, the disjunction is true. So remember that a disjunction is true in three ways. Each of the disjuncts could be true, or at least one of or the other of the disjuncts is true. Now notice that the fact that a disjunction is true in three ways 
is going to bear on how the intro and elimination rules work. So notice that in disjunction introduction, when some sentence P is true, it follows that P or some sentence Q is true. Now things are a little bit more complicated for disjunction elimination, but let's go back to what we understand about disjunction. The disjunction is true when at least one of the disjuncts is true. Since in our proof, we don't know whether P is true, Q is false, or Q is true and P is false, or if each of P and Q is true. So what we do with disjunction elimination is we say, okay, look, since we don't know the status of each of the disjuncts, let's assume first that the left side is true and from that inference, we generate the sentence S. And then if we assume the other disjuncts, in this case Q is true, and from that assumption we generate S, it follows that in either case, whether it's P that's true or Q that's true, or each both is true, both are true rather, that S follows. So remember, when you have a disjunction, it makes a lot of sense to assume disjunction elimination. So just a quick summary of the conjunction and disjunction de truth definitions, uh, which govern the way that the introduction and elimination rules work. We say that a conjunction is true in one and one way only. That's when each of the conjuncts is true. A disjunction is false in one and one way only, and that's when each of the disjuncts is false. Understanding these truth definitions helps us to make sense of how it is that we can introduce a conjunction or introduce a disjunction or eliminate a conjunction or eliminate a disjunction. I hope this has been helpful.